Happy New Year's, everyone. On our first episode of 2023, we've finally got new Tesla Semi specs revealed, major new milestones for Megapack production, and an update on the 4680 battery cell. So let's get into it. We've just seen the closest thing yet to some actual specifications and details about the inner workings of the Tesla Semi. On December 31st, Twitter user at GreenTheOnly dropped a spread of images depicting certain systems of the new Tesla tractor vehicle and was reportedly sourced from Tesla's online parts catalog. We can see several systems spread over the images, and Green specifically calls attention to the modular battery packs, which he reports is rated for 1000 volts, the mega cooling modules and the two rear axles named torque and efficiency. We can identify the efficiency axle with its single engine in the very back and the torque axle with a pair of engines just in front of that. That torque axle is reportedly only engaged when the vehicle is under heavy load or acceleration. Otherwise, the efficiency axle, which is optimized for constant highway speeds, is what the semi runs on. As for the cooling, it looks as though we can spot that in his image where we can see a big coolant tank where the charging port is, which makes sense when we remember that Tesla is going to be charging their semis at about 1 megawatt. We can also see that the huge batteries are separated into three sub-packs, which is what seems to be tipping people off to the modularity aspect. There's less in the way of solid numbers available. The images on Twitter and this chart released by Next Big Future on December 29th help to confirm the modularity of this new battery pack. The two different entries, a 500 mile and a 300 mile variant, could have meant that Tesla had already designed a smaller battery pack for the semi and was prepared to produce both. But the image from the parts catalog that Green dug up shows us that Tesla was smarter than that. They made sub packs that can be disconnected and removed according to a user's needs. The image shows that the batteries are organized into three rows of sub packs, each containing three modules. What's more, the chart from Next Big Future shows that the 300 mile semi weighs 5,500 pounds less than the 500 mile semi. Even though these are rough numbers, we're seeing that removing the 390 kilowatt hours worth of batteries allows the semi to haul slightly more at the cost of less range, while still keeping efficiency and power. This is probably the biggest reveal of the bunch because the modularity allows for many more different use cases for the Tesla Semi and will likely attract more buyers. Not every company needs a 500 mile variant and knowing that Tesla could refit a shorter ranged model to suit a specific need without having to redesign for a smaller battery pack means Tesla can have more variants on the road faster. Aside from the batteries though, we do have some other very interesting information that confirms the semi's capacity, which was shown back at the delivery event in December. There is a vehicle identification number, a VIN label, included with the images that gives us some hard numbers. Let's take a look at that for a minute. Like any other vehicle, this label lists things like rim dimensions, tire pressures, and the gross vehicle weight rating. This is what we're interested in. The label puts the semi's rating at 48,800 pounds. This means that the Tesla semi can safely operate at that maximum load, including accessories, the driver's weight, fluids, in this case this would include things like windshield wiper fluid but not fuel, any cargo on the tractor itself, and the force that the trailer's hookup is expected to add to the tractor. Almost 49,000 pounds of capacity is definitely not bad. Most modern large-scale tractors, like the Peterbilt 579, have a gross vehicle weight rating of 80,000 pounds, but that's on the high-end, long-haul side of the industry. With the numbers from that VIN label, the Tesla Semi would be comparable to a 2006 Peterbilt 379. But we don't just have the VIN label to go off of. We have the chart from Next Big Future to help get a more complete picture. The tractor weight for the 500 is listed as 26,000 pounds, which would likely be referring to the curb weight of the vehicle, or the tractor's weight with all its fluids topped off and ready to drive. Then we're shown the payload weight, 
44,000 pounds for the 500 mile semi and 49,500 pounds for the 300 mile variant. The 300 mile semi can carry a little more because it's not hauling extra batteries. The GCW or gross carry weight confirms that this payload number is separate from the tractor weight. And this is why some people were confused because 48,800 pounds of GVWR doesn't allow for the payload capacity we saw the semi pull back at the delivery event in December. But a semi's capacity is actually calculated based on its axles, and the clue for that is on the Twitter VIN label. You can see on the image that there's a heading for a GAWR, that's gross axle weight rating. Those numbers line up to show that the tractor's total gross weight rating is spread over the axles, with the rear two providing most of the capacity. So, while the semi's GVWR is calculated to include things like the trailer's hookups and the force those will impart on the vehicle, the trailer's axles add to the overall GVWR of the vehicle, raising it to about 82,000 pounds, right where Elon said it should be. While we're still relying more on sleuthing to get solid numbers, we are seeing more and more raw data now that the semi is out in the world and hauling freight. It's encouraging to see that most of the data the community had pieced together last year is matching up with more official benchmarks like the VIN label. And it's especially great to see the data laid out into that chart, showing just how much more efficient the Tesla semi is than any other competitors. I'd bet Tesla engineers are feeling vindicated. During New Year's, many of us like to look back at our accomplishments and Tesla is no different. On December 29th, the company's Twitter posted a list of milestones they hit in 2022. One of the more impressive numbers on that list is the mention of their mega factory in Lathrop, California, the facility where Tesla manufactures their Megapack energy storage systems. According to the thread, Tesla is reporting that the facility is capable of producing 10,000 megapack units per year, which matches up with earlier reports about the company's goals for the factory back in November. The increase in production is definitely due to the new facility. Previously, megapacks were being made in the Giga Nevada facility, and the output was reportedly somewhere around 2,100 units per year. But the demand for Tesla's Megapack units has risen sharply over the last couple of years, with facilities opening up in California, Canada, Australia, Hawaii, Slovenia, Belgium, England. So many countries, states, and towns are starting to use the Megapack to bolster their power grids, or just replace older infrastructure entirely. Hawaii used their Megapacks to finally kick coal power. A small town in Belgium recently replaced a generator from World War II with a small Megapack facility to stabilize peak or emergency grid loads. And this explosion of customers seems to have caught Tesla by surprise a bit. In December, it was reported that Tesla had listed the earliest estimated delivery date for new Megapack orders in late 2024. Now, this is a good sign that Tesla will likely need every unit of its new 10K capacity, which is very good news, as each unit is over 2 million USD, which could translate to over 20 billion in new revenue if they manage to fill all those orders. CEO Elon Musk has mentioned before that there is an essentially quasi-infinite demand for energy storage, and that Tesla's energy services could end up being more profitable than even their vehicle fleet. And that's probably down to the fact that the world is in desperate need of solutions to both replacing aging energy infrastructure and replacing polluting sources with greener ones. Whatever the reasons for Megapacks flying off the shelves, it translates to a lot of money for Tesla. Not a bad start to 2023. It's been a pretty good year for Tesla's production numbers. In the end of year recap posted on Twitter, the company went over a bunch of production and sales milestones, vehicle production, the new Megapack facility, the first Tesla semi deliveries, and several more. But a really telling entry is a bit about 4680 battery cell production. According to Tesla, they are now producing their biggest cell at such a high volume that they can support the production of over 1,000 cars a week. That's roughly 868,000 cells produced every seven days. The news originally came on December 25th from the team over at the Cato Road facility in Fremont, California, where Tesla currently produces most of their 4680 cells. 
What really makes this impressive is that these numbers are before new production lines in facilities like Giga Texas have been completed. But this news comes at about the same time we're seeing Giga Texas hitting Model Y production numbers as high as 3,000 per week. This milestone was definitely helped by the increased 4680 production. We just can't be sure how much as Giga Texas manufactures Model Ys with 4680 cells and the older 2170 cells. But it's safe to assume that supporting the production of 104680 equipped vehicles per week is very useful capability for Tesla to have as an in-house operation. Tesla has been building a huge ramp up of their 4680 battery production in preparation for an expected bump in EV sales over the next few years, as countries like the US have started passing legislation to help incentivize people to buy their greener vehicles. And these numbers are just for Tesla's in-house battery production team. For the time being, Tesla is still getting some help from partners like Panasonic, who are about to begin construction of a new battery production facility of their own in the United States. Currently, the only vehicle using the 4680 cell is the Model Y, and the ramp up in production will certainly help get more of Tesla's popular crossover shipped. But the production ramp could open the possibility of equipping other, newer models should Tesla and its partners reach a point where they're able to produce more cells than the Model Y production needs. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter, so sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.